Hey guys and welcome back to another tasty blender tutorial. Yesterday we are taking a look at how to create this abstract shader. Now we will be mostly just working in the shader department so feel free to follow. There will be as always a free resource file with this video that you can download from my Gumroad in the description below. Also don't forget to like the video, comment under the video and subscribe to the channel because it helps me out a lot. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'm gonna open up Blender 2.93 and we're gonna set up first a couple of objects, a couple of things just to prep the scene. It's gonna be fairly easy. So I'm gonna add a sphere and a UV sphere at that. Let me scale it up slightly. Let's say to four, something like that. W to shade smooth, control two to add a subdivision of two. Before we move onward to any shading or any cameras or anything, I'm going to go into my render properties and change from EV to cycles and from supported to experimental. In my case, I'm also going to use the device to be the GPU. Now, why did I do this? We will be using displacement and it's really important we use the experimental build and then use the adaptive subdivision to use the shader's displacement. Next up, I'm going to add a camera like that. Press zero to get into the camera and I'll press GZ and I can press GZ twice and then just move my mouse. So I'm moving backwards and I have my sphere nice and tight in the middle. And basically that's gonna be it for now. So we can start working on our shader. Now, in order to do that, I will be dividing the screen like so. So on my right side, I'm gonna press T to hide that little space. And I'm gonna go under my menus over here and choose the shader editor also with shift three. Press N, so I collapse this. I'm gonna select my object and add a new material, like that. And there you go, we have a nice principal BSDF. And now we can start working on our abstract shader. So I'm gonna go into viewport shading for now so I can see what's happening, what the colors are, what's like the shape, generally speaking. So I'm gonna start building these. Uh, I'm going to press Control T, which is going to put in the texture coordinate mapping and image texture. Now, if you don't have this, this is a specific add-on that you can go under your preferences, under your add-ons, and you can search for Node Wrangler and tick the Node Wrangler add-on, which is going to put this shortcut to use. I'm going to switch the texture coordinate to generate it instead of UV. I'm going to delete the image texture and I'm going to add a wave texture. I'm going to add this bad boy here and the second one is going to be a magic texture so this magic texture is where we will get the coloring so it's going to be pretty random and last thing add a displacement one like so okay we have these three elements we just connect the vectors now for the magic and wave texture magic texture we connect the base color for the wave texture, we connect the color to the height and then the displacement to the displacement. And we get this. So now it doesn't look pre very impressive. We can go under our material properties tab and under settings, tick displacement, not to be bump only, but displacement and bump. So now if we go into rendered view, we can see that the displacement is actually working. If you have just bump only, it's not going to work. Cool. Now we see the displacement working, but it's not very close to what we want. Now, first of all, we want to play a bit around with the wave texture. So I'm going to drop down the scale to, let's say, one and increase the distortion to something crazy. Let's say 40, something like that. And what I'm looking for is these like nice waves and then little islands in between, right? Because I want this nice distribution. I'm also going to lower the scale considerably, let's say to 0 0.18, because when we switch into rendered view, you can see like how the actual thing is distributed. Let's continue with our detail. I'm going to drop the detail down, which creates even more waviness. And in this case, we can decrease or increase the scale, decrease or increase the distortion. So we get different like vibes of effect. I personally really like this, this shape because when you go into rendered view, it gets these nice flowy lines that are going to be extra accentuated when we work in, let's say, keyframing stuff. Okay, back in our viewport, let's do a 
very quick trick for the color. So the magic texture, I'm going to bump the depth to 3, and it's still not working as we want to. What I do usually is just draw the scale down as much as possible to, let's say, 1 almost or 0, 0,9. I'm looking for a nice distribution of colors, and then I do the distortion, and the distortion is what actually starts to mix all of those funky colors together. And once I have the distortion, I can try, let's say, diminishing the depth, and then I can increase the scale, decrease the scale, all depending on what type of vibe I'm going with. Something like that, maybe. That should be pretty good. Now, if I go into my rendered view, you can see that we're using the normal type of uh, lighting in our world. So if I drop the strength, it's going to be zero. What I want to do here is actually use a short trick. So it's going to be search mix shader. So I'm going to search for the mix shader. I'm going to search for the emission shader and then for the Fresno or Freno shader. I'm going to connect the emission to the bottom socket, and then I'm going to connect the factorial to the mix input. Drop the strength down to zero in our world setting, and I'll connect the magic texture to the color of the emission. And I can also increase, let's say, the emission, so we get this nice shiny object, and it's distributing just along the lines of the edges almost. It doesn't look very good, and that's because we need to bump the transmission to 1, and I'll push the roughness down. And this is essentially it. Basically, we have it lit. We, you don't need to put any HDRIs, you don't need to put any sort of, I don't know, area lights. If you'd like to, you can, but it can work as well as it is now. Now, for the animation part, it's going to be also very, very quick and very, very easy. So what we're going to do is stay at frame 1, and let me say we're going to do an animation of, let's say, 120 frames. I also want to change the frame rate to 30 FPS in my output properties. So once I have this, I'm going to start animating this, and it's going to be just by animating the actual mapping node and the wave texture. Pretty easy. So. Let me go with the rotation. So I'm just going to set the inset keyframes. So in my case, it's just right click or in your case, left click if you're using a different convention and just replace keyframes or insert keyframes. Now I'm going to move, let's say, to the middle, which is going to be 60. Let's say I move the top to 180, the bottom to minus 180, let's say X to 180, Y to 180, and Z to 180 completely randomly choosing what's happening. Let me inset the keyframes, and let's see what happens. This is pretty fast, and maybe we don't want that fast of a movement. So I'm just going to clear the keyframes, and I'm going to reset everything to zero. Let me return to the first one, insert keyframes, and let's go to 120. Let's try with 90. So it's going to be a bit of a softer movement. And let's just do the X and the Y and not the Z, okay? Don't forget to insert the keyframes, and let's try it. This is a nicer, more fluid motion. It's not looping, but if you wanted to make it looping, you could do, let's say, 240 frames on the bottom, and then split your screen like so, and choose the top menu to be the graph editor. And if you choose the mapping node, it's going to show you the curves. Click on normalize so you can see all of the curves, and there they go. You can press C and just choose the first, let's say, keyframes. Control C, move to the end of the animation to the 240 mark, and paste it. And now we have a nice looping animation. It's returning back, going back. This is, this is how I would loop usually an animation. Do also a bunch of curve work, but for now we don't need it. Another thing we can map at this point is also the wave texture. I'm just going to do the scale and let's say the distortion. I'm going to go to 120. Let me increase the scale to let's say 2.5. Insert the keyframe and maybe we can increase the distortion. Insert the keyframe. Now since we have same principle as earlier. We can just click, 
on these control C and then copy them to the end of the actual animation. So let's see. So it's a really weird, really trippy type of animation. Let's go to our rendered view to see how it looks at different points and stages. This is also how you make sure that everything is working correctly. Now, if you're not sure, maybe the displacement is a bit too strong, so we can lower it down like that. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure about the strength of the whole thing, so probably I'm just going to leave the distortion. So for the distortion, I can just click on clear frames, lower it down to where it was initially at about 40, and that's it. Now we can again lower the scale of our displacement so we have this nice wobbly wavy thing. And that's basically it. That's basically how you animate this wibbly wobbly type of abstract sphere. So yeah, this is going to be it for this tutorial. Hopefully you've learned something new. As always, this is a free resource file available with this video. You can find it on my Gumroad in the link in the description. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel and let me know what you thought down in the comments. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.